Welcome back to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as a thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Apple, Spotify, or Google, please leave a five-star rating. Let's jump into the news, and we're going to start with some non-crypto news uh, first. Wells Fargo was ordered to pay $3.7 billion for a widespread mismanagement of auto loans, mortgages, and deposit accounts. But you know, guys, crypto is the problem. Crypto is the risk. Crypto is the big risk to the economy and financial e ecosystem, not the big banks which of course nearly destroyed our economy in 2008 and which continue to do fraud and are you know every year it seems like every one of these banks are fined millions of dollars it includes JP Morgan and many others and it's it's just another example of how you know bad actors and scammers exist in every asset class and every market but you know what you won't see the sensationalized headlines around Wells Fargo. This is going to have its news day today, and then it's going to disappear. While crypto will get the big sensationalized headlines. Oh no, crypto just crashed a billion dollars or something, right? They'll they'll come up with some clickbait for you to uh, watch and view and to uh, really fool the uneducated masses because this is a new asset class, a new technology. Now, we notice technology is here to stay and there's a lot of naysayers. So I tweeted out at Senator Warren, uh, Elizabeth Warren, Brad Sherman, and Noriel Robini, who are uneducated naysayers. And I said, oh, no, uh, it, but crypto is the problem, right? Not Wells Fargo. They just have to pay $3.7 billion and to continue the uh, fraudulent activity they've been doing. It, you know, it's, it's once again, double standard hypocrisy, and you won't see Brad Sherman or Noriel Robini coming out and saying anything. Credit to Elizabeth Warren. She did say something about it. But uh, this is the environment we're in. And the reason why I'm sharing with you is don't fall for sensationalized headlines and what the mainstream media puts out there. You have to do your own research, look at who are, who's building, who's investing, and that's what I try to share on this podcast. Now, guys, we got some good news around BlockFi today. Here's the headline. BlockFi files motion to allow wallet users to withdraw crypto. BlockFi hopes bankruptcy court will let users withdraw crypto from wallet accounts, although yield-seeking creditors might not be so lucky. So, guys... Um, it looks like some of you who you know have your funds stuck on BlockFi will be able to access your funds. So let me give you the details. In a motion filed Monday with the U.S. Bankruptcy Court in New Jersey, BlockFi requested authority to process withdrawals for crypto held in the platform's wallet accounts. BlockFi wallet accounts are separate to the platform's interest-bearing yield products, essentially serving as a hot wallet. The platform's interest-bearing accounts were not included in BlockFi's motion. So just the wallet, guys, not the yield-bearing uh, uh, products and services. So this is some good news. I know it's not the greatest news because it doesn't include the interest-bearing yield products, but at least some folks will be able to access their funds. You know, this this situation, of course, sucks all around. And uh, I blame a big part of it. I blame on the SEC for fining BlockFi $100 million. You think BlockFi could have used that money, right? And to even add to this day, let's say they were in trouble, right? As a business and they went into bankruptcy, they could have used that $100 million to help keep them afloat and even pay back users. But Gary Gensler and the SEC pocketed that money. So BlockFi highlighted a section of its terms of service, which states, title to the cryptocurrency held in your BlockFi wallet shall at all times remain with you and shall not transfer to BlockFi. Clients should be able to withdraw such assets from the platform if they choose, BlockFi said. The firm initially flagged intention for its withdrawal motion at the end of November. Uh, BlockFi also sought permission to reflect transactions launched after its suspended service on November 10th in light of a liquidity crisis. This would effectively process user attempts at transferring funds between wallet and interest-bearing accounts, as well as any pending trades. Now, Tif Tiffany Fong, who I've interviewed on the channel, many of you know she kind of came to notoriety 
from the whole Celsius inf- uh, insiders who have leaked information to her and even uh, Sam Beckman fried talking to her, you know, doing one of his first interviews with her. And uh, I'm actually going to be interviewing her again. You know, she tweeted out, wow, BlockFi has already filed a motion requesting client withdrawals for assets held in BlockFi wallet accounts. Shout out to BlockFi for moving exponentially more quickly than Celsius in Chapter 11. Yeah, Celsius is a mess. Alex Mashinsky needs to be held accountable. All right, guys, let's jump ahead. Um, We got an article here from the Wall Street Journal, and here's the title. Where was Biden's SEC sheriff on Sam Bangman free? Question mark. Gary Ganser has been the cop on the beat, but he took little interest in FTX as the scandal developed. I love this. Mainstream media covering the clear, clear, blatant failure of one SEC chairman, Gary Ganser. We've talked about it on this podcast <laughs> ad nauseum, right? <laughs> Even in my recent interview with Congressman Bill Heisinga, I asked him, how are, they gonna, how are you guys going to keep uh, Gary Genser and the SEC accountable? And he talked about what steps he's going to take. But uh, a, a lot of people in mainstream are now recognizing what's happening. And it's clear that Gary Genser turned a blind eye, whether it be to political c- donations or connections to Sam Beckman frieds parents. I don't know. But- There was some sort of free pass being worked on for FTX, where FTX would get the clarity and uh, other exchanges like Binance and so forth would get get the hammer coming down on them. And of course, we know Sam Bankman-Fried made uh, billions of dollars, I think, believe millions, excuse me, of uh, dollars donations to uh, politicians. So it got him a lot of favors in D.C., um, but we know he was not running a, a well-oiled machine. He was doing a lot of fraud, stealing people's money with Almeida Research, you know, gambling with the uh, clients' funds. So really great to see the Wall Street Journal calling this out. And Brad Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple, he retweeted this article and he said, this 100%, it's ridiculous and frankly shameful that Chair Genser was touting the SEC's enforcement actions as the cop on the beat, yet, per public reports, met with Sam Bankman-Fried multiple times, but was caught completely flat-footed when the alleged fraud finally came to light. And I believe, in, and this is just pure speculation now, the fact that uh, Sam Bankman-Fried was arrested the day before he was going to go before Congress and speak to Maxine Waters and so forth was the doing of the CFTC and the SEC. They don't want him to go talk about all these meetings he had with Gary Genser and the SEC. And, you know, we were in Gary's office and we were with the CFTC because those regulators, especially the SEC, completely failed. And uh, this happened under their watch. And uh, not only FTX, but Gary Genser failed to catch Celsius. He failed to catch Voyager, 3 AC, 3 Hours Capital, Um, in addition, Terra Luna. But, you know, the highlight of the year is Kim Kardashian. He did catch Kim Kardashian. He saved us from Kim Kardashian. Oh, no. Right. While billions of dollars were being lost and stolen from users. Just simply ridiculous. Now, Congressman Tom Emmer, who's been a very vocal critic of Gary Genser, um, he tweeted out something today about the digital dollar. And I'm telling you, folks, this is coming. CBDCs are coming. They're building the the CBDCs on private and public blockchains. Uh, I can't wait wait to see which blockchains have been uh, selected. We know the XRP Ledger has been piloted. We know Algorand has been piloted, even Ethereum. So you're going to see some big news, and and it's going to be very interesting when that comes out. Well, he did an op-ed here, and it's titled, The U.S. Must Carefully Consider the Development of a Digital Dollar. He said the U. He tweeted out the article and said the U.S. remains a tech leader not because we force innovators to adopt our values, but because we allow tech that holds these values at their core to flourish. What happens if the U.S. issues a CBDC that doesn't reflect American values? And these are one of the things um, that I've been very concerned about. I've asked Congressman Tom Emmer, I've asked uh, Chris Giancarlo, and many others. It has to align with the U.S. Constitution uh, to to maintain our right to privacy. That is important, guys, because, look, it may start – we've seen this throughout history. You give uh, a little inch to the government, and eventually over time, they will take a mile. 
We saw it with the, uh, I think it's the Patriarch and the NSA and so forth. They will abuse the power eventually. It may not start like that. Maybe the first 10 years will be fine, but you never know who can come along, who, who you know, some sort of uh, uh, tyrant, if you, that's the word I'm looking for, but uh, may come along and try to use that. And you wouldn't know, right? They'll start uh, tapping into everything you're doing. And then eventually they could put, you know, some sort of social credit system. And I'm not trying to fear monger, but I understand human psychology. I understand there is, there's people who don't have good intentions out there and they would love to do something like this and, and keep people under their thumb. Right. Um, so we want, we don't want the, that to happen. We don't want the opportunity for that to happen. We need to be careful. So this is another thing we need to fight for guys. And, uh, the good thing though, is that we have these other cryptos and digital assets that if we don't want to use the CBDC, we don't have to. I can send you some money in Bitcoin and XRP and Ethereum and ADA and Algorand, whatever it is, right? Even Dogecoin. I can bypass those things and send money and receive money in that way. So something to think about here. Now, something very interesting about Polygon Matic. And uh, look, I am so bullish on Polygon and Matic. Matic is a native token on the Polygon blockchain. They've been getting huge adoption by big brands who are launching NFTs and different projects on Polygon. I've been accumulating the hell out of Matic. That's not financial investment advice. Do your own research. Well, they partnered with Neo Banking app Hi, yes, H I, and Mastercard to launch an NFT debit card. Now, on its face, I'm like, what? What the hell would I need an NFT debit card? This seems weird. Um, and let me give you the details, guys, because this is. A bit strange, but you know the move it follows other strategic partnerships from Polygon, which was uh, has collaborated with Starbucks and Magic Eden. Um, called the NFT Debit Mastercard, cardholders can spend either crypto or fiat currencies at 90 million global merchants. Users can also mint and personal mint any personal NFT, whether a holiday photo or profile picture, for the cover of their debit card without paying gas fees. The move marks the latest strategic partnership for Polygon, which is trying to become the face of gasless fees for NFTs. Now, many of you know Polygon is the layer two scaling solution for Ethereum. Polygon undergrids the Starbucks NFT loyalty rewards beta, as well as new blockchain gaming features from Solana's biggest NFT marketplace, Magic Eden. Though Ethereum still dominates NFT trade volume by blockchain, Polygon has seen NFT transactions rise 1,648% from the first week of December to the second, according to the Blocks Data dashboard. Um, so I don't know how this is going to work. We're going to have to wait for more details on this. But, uh, you know, the two things don't jive to me, right? NFT debit card, uh, we'll see, you know, how, how this works. But, um, We'll, we, you know, we'll see how how they, the mechanisms of this work, but um, as they release more details. But I don't know about this one. I understand crypto debit cards because there's a you know a transaction value there to the token. Uh, maybe it's a transaction value to the NFT or selling the NFTs and spending. I, I don't know, but you know we'll have to wait for more details. Finally, guys, consensus shareholders win battle in war for critical Ethereum infrastructure. Many of you know consensus is the company that works and builds Ethereum. Um, obviously, they've uh, worked with JP Morgan and the whole Quorum blockchain situation. There were acquisitions there. So the ruling provides ex-employees a path to legally argue the firm's most valuable assets, including crypto wallet MetaMask. Uh, were improperly transferred to a separate entity. So there's a lot of uh, drama here with Joe Lubin and, and uh, consensus and so forth. Um, and it looks like things are moving ahead in favor of those who are uh, suing uh, consensus. But the decision came last month, about eight months after a group of 35 shareholders requested an audit of the company and to investigate the dealings of its founder, Joseph Lubin. That audit request is expected to be ruled in the coming weeks, according to a shareholder statement published Tuesday. Arthur Falls, a former employee of Ethereum software company, alleged in March that in August 2020, Consensus AG, also known as Consensus Mesh, illegally transferred intellectual property and other assets into, con into Consensus Software Incorporated. The transfer in exchange of 10% of ownership of CSI, um, 
and an offset of a $39 million loan by Lubin, according to Falls, the director of media for Consensus Systems from February 2016 to September 2017. Falls said inter- internally code named Project North Star, the transaction resulted in legacy financial institutions such as J.P. Morgan Chase acquiring an influential stake in MetaMask and Infura, two of the most widely used infrastructure tools in Ethereum. The transfer assets, which also include Truffle, Pegasus, and Codify, were valued at $46.6 million as of June 30th, 2020, according to the documents reviewed by BlockWorks in March. The transfer was executed in a deliberate and premeditated fashion without seeking uh, shareholder input, Falls had told BlockWorks. A consensus spokesperson denied the allegations at the time. The representative said that the transfer of assets from uh, CAG to CSI was conducted properly, adding the accounting firm PwC conducted an independent valuation. So we'll see where this goes, but certainly not good for the uh, Joe Lubin and these folks at Consensus. But look, they got um, J.P. Morgan behind them now, so you know they'll have a lot of resources and money to fight this. But clearly, um, it looks like these folks at Consensus trying to move things around, probably to the benefit of J.P. Morgan, right? Give the rights to J.P. Morgan um, because J.P. Morgan they're trying to to establish himself as much as possible in crypto, despite what Jamie Dimon has been saying publicly. And we've talked about that a lot, his smoke and mirrors moves, right? Publicly criticized crypto and Bitcoin while his company is building, investing, and doing all these things. So that's the news, my friends. Um, Hopefully some good news here with BlockFi. And uh, you know, those of you who are listening or watching, maybe uh, you can get access to your funds. And I hope uh, same thing with Voyager. We know Binance US is looking to buy or they have bought Voyager. And once that deal closes, uh, you know, you should be able to get your funds there too. So hoping everybody can get their funds, even FTX as well, that you know, folks can get their funds back. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the thumbs up button, share this podcast, and I'll talk to you all later.